class. In this presentation, we're going to focus a little bit on the quiz project that will be due shortly. All of the instructions for the assignment may be found in the assignments folder and within that the quiz project folder. In there you'll see a set of instructions, you'll see the grading scale, tip sheets for how to write the items, uh, this video as well as the quiz creation project uh, final submission link. In this project, you're going to create a 10-question test, but you may work for with someone. And if you work with someone, it should be 15 questions. Um, it should be appropriate for use with a unit in your classroom. A unit is typically three to five weeks of material, so it's not just one lesson. And in this test, you're going to use selective response uh, and sample constructed response. So we're talking about selective response this week. That's multiple choice, binary, uh, true-false, for example, or matching. And these are questions that students have to um, choose from an answer that's given on the page, as opposed to a constructive response, which is essay or short answer or fill in the blank, um, where students have to write the answer. So again, 10 question tests and it's going to be mixed between selective response questions and uh, constructed response questions. Now, preschool and kindergarten teachers ask me, well, how can I do this? My students can't even read. Um, so it's very simple because you put a, a, an instruction in your paper that this will be given to preschool students and the questions will be read out loud. So your project includes the following a brief description of the unit on which the assessment would be based. This doesn't have to be lengthy, but it should include uh, what the subject is, what the grade level is, the type of class, um, and the resources that you have available. Uh, it should include one or two, no more than two. I would say one would probably be better to stick with standards to be mastered. And you can choose these again from the folder that's on the course materials page, the standards folder. When you do this, it's important to write out the whole standard because I don't have all the standards memorized. And I want to be able to see that your learning target aligns with your standard. One or two learning targets. Don't give, don't give me five or seven because it's just too hard to, um, to assess them. So just one or two learning targets that are standards-based, broad enough for the unit, clear and measurable. Um, remember that learning targets must contain criteria for success. So you'll want to read the detailed instructions in the assignment, but briefly to go over what you need to do, you need to develop 10 to 5 or 15 test items, test questions with their solutions. Uh, very specifically, five of these need to be multiple choice, Unless you're working with a partner, which you may, then it needs to be seven. Three need to be true for the false items or some type of dichotomous items, like such as fact, opinion, or four if you're working with a partner. You need to have one matching item with multiple premises. So what this means is, let's say you have a matching item with where you have to match five dates with five um, events. That counts as one matching item, not as five items. And finally, one constructive response item uh, that is something like a fill in the blank, a math problem, if you're doing math problems, short answer, essay, anywhere where the students have to give, um, uh, construct the item rather than select the item, or three if you're working with a partner. In addition to creating the test, you need to run two flesh Kincaid analyses. One is for the grade level of, of the items, and one is for the readability analysis. Um, a, an instructional exercise to help you do this is located in uh, module six, and uh, you'll need to put those in your paper. Now, what are you looking for? Well, basically, you're looking to, that the grade level isn't too much above your current grade level. So let's say you're doing a, a quiz for third graders. You don't want a ninth grade reading level. You know, a third grade or even a fourth grade might be okay, but I wouldn't go higher than that. 
or the readability. This is how readable it is. Do you have a lot of past sentences? Do you have a lot of grammar error problems? And those really um, do make your document less readable. So here you're looking for a score of 60 or higher. A rationale for choosing the types of items uh, you selected on, based on best practices. So a rationale is, okay, well, why did you select these particular items to be multiple choice? You need to look in your textbook because there are very specific reasons for choosing, item, making items a particular format. And if you don't have a well-crafted rationale that's uh, cited from your textbook, you will lose, po lose points in this area. And finally, a reflection. Now, the most common error that I find that students make here is that they write a conclusion instead of a reflection. A conclusion basically summarizes what you did. I went in, I observed, I enjoyed it. But a reflection tells me what you've learned. So what surprised you? What was harder or easier than you thought? Uh, what did you like or dislike? What strategies did you learn that you can take back into your own classroom? Finally, there is a grading scale for the quiz creation project. A grading scale is different from a rubric. You'll notice that uh, there aren't multiple levels with carefully described uh, criteria. You just have basically, um, you have a portion of the document, such as a description of the unit, and the points possible. This is called a grading scale. So you can look in the grading scale um, in the folder. There, there are more criteria than this. Uh, and then what I suggest to students is when they're doing their assignment, have the grading scale or the rubric by their side so they can see how they will score um, in their assignment. So this concludes this presentation of understanding the quiz project. And if you have any questions, please, it's better to ask early than later. But I welcome all questions at any time. Thanks.